Abigail and Sir Stuart have elite palates and perfect taste, much better than yours. Learn about the fine nuances of finer wine on Invigorating. <laughs> This wine is fabulous. It takes me right back to those days on grandfather's pheasant farm. The scent after a fresh massacre. Yes, it reminds me a lot of the summer spent in the Congo studying the silverbacks during mating season. <laughs> oh, hell no. We're Stevie and Josiah. A girl and a guy who happen to know a lot about drinking. That's because we drink a lot. But we also study a lot and work a lot. We've worked at some of the best restaurants and wine shops from coast to coast. But at the end of the day, we're still just two everyday people who are thirsty. Really thirsty. We hope you are too. So we're here today with uh, Caroline. Uh, Caroline, so what is it that you do? I'm a textile designer, so that means that I take um, I make designs and they're printed or woven into fabric, which is printed and then cut into clothing or bags or shoes. Or Very cool. Things. Do you ever find your designs on, in Chinatown, like on bags and stuff, like the knockoff brand? Or? A couple times. It's good when you're printing at home to start with something that's not quite perfect. So sometimes I like to just work with shapes that feel a little, just a little bit more organic. I mean, it feels like, you know, you could see it in nature, maybe even like animal tracks or something, you know, really just serene and calm. So do your designs get better with the more like weed that you smell? Just transfer the design that we were just talking about kind of onto your carving block with some marker. Just give you a guide. Cool. And then you just take your knife, and just I'll let you give this a try, uh -huh. and just keep your fingers out of the way and just use the knife to carve away any part of the block. It's really, it's really soft, it's super easy. Mm -hmm. That you don't want in your design. Okay. Now that you have your stamp, you're ready to start printing on paper. Okay. So to do that, you need to have a brayer, textile printing ink, and your stamp. I'm gonna put some of this ink down on the braying pad. You can just use cardboard though. And then just use the brayer to you know, make it even and then take your stamp and just lightly run a coating of the ink over your stamp. Okay. So not a ton, just a little just bit. Just a little bit, yeah. Right. Or it goes a long way. And then you just take it and you press it onto the fabric. And it's a stamp. So what all could you use this uh, fabric for now that we have like the design and stuff on it? You can really do anything you want with it. You can. Are you tired of lonely nights watching the Lifetime channel? Then maybe it's time for Fancy Fabric. Fancy Fabric will change your life, guaranteed. Use it for samurai training. Use it to scare people. Or use it for private action. Subscribe to our channel now for a chance to win. Huh. I thought maybe we could use this fabric as a wrap to carry wine bottles in. Oh, cool. If you were going to a party, you could bring it as a gift, or just even if you're going to a picnic. Yeah. Um, it's a Japanese technique of gift wrapping that just uses fabric called furoshiki. Lay your fabric flat on the ground with one of the corners pointing towards you. Okay. And take two bottles of wine and put them end to end down on the fabric, sort of in the upper area. Okay. Fabric. Then fold over the top corner and sort of tuck it under like a burrito. I like burritos. <laughs> it's good visual. Yeah. And then wrap it, just keeping it all pretty taut and smooth the whole way down. That is a very beautiful and professional looking design. Well, compliments to you. Josiah just made it. So finish rolling until you've reached the end of the fabric. And then just grab the two bottles by the neck and pull them so they're both upright. Stand it up and use your two ends to tie together. Cool. And then voila. Wow, this is amazing. I mean, I would say like, I, I don't know, most of the time when I go to parties and stuff, I like put them in like a paper bag and then like, you know, halfway there, the bag breaks and then I look like a drunk walking with just like raw bottles. But this is really, really cool. Like I wish I could be more like you and have like a cool little idea like this. Well, I wish I could be more like you guys because I may know how to wrap up a bottle of wine, but I never know what to bring to a party. You'll never know what's 
the right price, yeah. the right kind of flavor, I don't know. It's easy. I mean, I think the main thing when you're bringing uh, wines to a party and you don't know who really is going to be there and stuff like that, you want to look for stuff that A, is really delicious, is the main thing, mm -hmm. affordable and versatile. So, yes. yeah. Stevie, why don't you break that down for us? Let's start with affordable. Go for a region that's a little bit offbeat. A high quality to price ratio tends to dwell in these areas. Plus, if you don't know that much about it, chances are your pretty pals won't either, which makes you look kind of cool. Next, delicious and versatile. It's a matter of personal preference for sure, but wines that are lighter in body and higher in acidity just tend to be easier down the hatch. Plus, they're really good at refreshing your palate after mouthfuls of salty snacks, like those freaking delicious mini hot dogs wrapped in crisp rolls. So what wines fit into this framework? There's a lot of options out there, like Riesling, or Beaujolais, or heck, almost any rosé. But today we're into two specific wines. First is a white. It's called Vino Verde, from a little area in northern Portugal, right by the Atlantic Ocean. Vino Verde means green wine, but the green actually refers to the freshness of the wine, which can be white, or rosé, or even red. We like the whites, made from a variety of local grapes, like Albarino, or Trajadora, or Lorero, because they're light in body, really refreshing, not too fruity, not too minerally, just right. Plus, they're often a tiny bit carbonated and spritzy, so it's like a party in your mouth. And they're super affordable. You can find a red one for like under 10 bucks. Crudite or cheesy poofs are equally welcome. The red we're into partying with is Barbera from the Piedmont region in Italy. It makes medium bodied wines with sour cherry notes and tangy acidity. Its personality is bright and fun, just like you want to be at a party. Now, Piedmont is home to some pretty prestigious structured red wines like Barolo, which call for special occasions. But what do you think the people of Piedmont drink when they're going to an easygoing get-together? That's right, they drink Barbera, and lots of it, especially if there's salami in sight, or Tortino's pizza rolls. Those are totally from Italy, right? All right, so for party time, you need party wines. Uh, we have two wines here. First one up, this is the Brabant Vino Verde. Um, so Vino Verde is the area in Portugal from which this wine comes. Um, this is made by Bartholomew Broadbent. So this guy grew up in Portugal, really loved the kind of fresh and lively wines from there. And when he moved to the U.S., he really missed those wines. So he decided to bring them from Portugal to the U.S. to you. And this is really great stuff because it's only eight bucks. Really fresh, really lively, very versatile, and definitely affordable. All right, so the next wine we have is the 2010 Scarpetta del Monferrato. Barbera being the grape coming from Italy, from Piemonte, from a little area called Monferrato. So this is made by a really cool dude named Bobby Stuckey. He's also a master sommelier, which uh, he knows his stuff. And he basically teams up with his chef at Frasca, and they make this wine specifically to go really well with food. So really nice kind of fresh fruit flavors, um, very versatile and also very affordable, coming in at around 15 bucks. Take good. 